Hi. Tech Rabbit here. Um, we'll continue building the printer. And now we're going to take the X axis assembly. So let's have a look at that. Then. So right here we have the parts. Let's take a brief run through what we have here. So we have the two X axis rods. And then we have the plastic pieces for the X axis, which is these two side parts. And then we have the box of um, parts, which is the bearings. Let's see if I can get the camera focused there. And then we have the motor for the X axis. And remember to take the one that actually has it's a very small X on it marked. Take the one that's marked X. There, got it. So don't take the wrong motor, but they have different cable lengths. And um, then we have some screws. Idler or a pulley and an idler, and then a selection of, of screws. Alright, so that was M318, two of them, uh, M3 N, small N, large N, and uh, nylock nut, one, and then M3 and S not one. Those are the parts. So let's get down to smooth some of this stuff. We we'll need those bags. See what we're going to start with them. What do you do? The instructions. Let's see now. Okay, so the first thing is to put the linear bearings in. Um, This was important that one doesn't try to push them into the wrong through the wrong end because one of the ends is um, actually a um, smaller hole. So let's start here. Let's see how easily they go in. Oh, it's not that bad. the video so I go and find um, something I can press them in with in a reasonable way. So anyway, not um, Prusa recommended I would think. But anyway what I did is I took this screwdriver and I opened it up a bit and put one of the one of the screws in there just to keep it apart. So now it's actually quite easy to push the bearing in without putting access force on it. really would not like to force the bearing. And the reason is that if you look at the bearing, oh come on focus. Why doesn't it want to focus? There, good. See, it's um, rubber and then with a very thin casing. So you don't want to be pressing on that rubber part. And you could be pushing out the bearings. The small um, round balls. So I'm trying not to do that. 
Oh, I'm using this. Um, oh, come on, focus. Um, there. I'm using that flat part to um, push up the varying sides. Take the mini car actually. I'm trying to actually have the. Let's see here. Um, no, wrong one. Uh, I put it there. So here. And then it should be flush with the with the end. Use the table to go on far left. Or is there an edge left over from printing? You can't get it exactly flush. Look at that. In the instructions, it says that it, you should push the bearing in to be flush. But that's an edge. There's an edge left over from the printing. It's probably been standing and printed that way. Like standing like that. So there's, a, there's actually quite a considerable edge there. So if you try and force it on that, now you'd have to actually trim that away. So actually, since that's a good thing to stop it dropping out, I think I will. Um, That would be best to leave it like that. Well, I'm not going to take that edge away. I think I'm just going to leave the bearing there. Um, offset from the edge. Oh, it's very hard to see. What you see it's like the little edge going around. I think that's good. I'll just leave that. I'm going to leave the bearing where it is. I won't put it flush. And now I put the other one in. And now actually I think I could take the screw out. There. Yeah, take the screw out. Could have screwed it out. But now I think it's probably okay just to put another bearing in here. And then I put, use the table to push it down. Can't use this surface. This surface is soft. So, so that's that one in. Okay, and then the next one. So I'm going to use the same um, trick for this one. Be back when it's done. So that's done. So I'll use the same trick and just um, push the. And it has the same, like I said, the same edge here. So I'm just going to leave it in embedded. And I think that's actually good to have an edge. And just it will prevent those bearings from moving. So do so. Oh, now I forgot that. Ah, oh, I'm so not good at following instructions. Anyway, you should basically do this. You should make so the lineup of the um, bearings is 45 degrees. So let's see if I succeeded in any way. I'll form with that. <laughs> Yeah, okay, this one ended up... Oh, and there's no way to show it on the camera. It's too dark. Ah, forget it. Yeah, but anyway, they, I ended up... This one's 45. Let's see what I, what happened with this one. <laughs> oh, wow. That was just up. I would say not totally perfect, but pretty much. Okay, that was good luck. So I had to fix it. But I don't know how serious this is. I mean, uh, yeah, 
how I would debate that. And that is that so critical. Okay, what are we gonna do next? I want to screw in. And that's there. And so that means that we put that part on the side out of the way. Those also on that one. And then we have this one. And we should look at it from this side. And here we need here and just quickly double check that we actually have 18 yep that's it it's actually quite useful that sheet Press it in a little bit extra. say in the instructions then one should make sure it doesn't come out right now into the hole and then you see that it's free so not not to screw this in the screw in so that so that it, it um, comes into the hole okay so that's done with that and then the next one this and the knot should go in there see if I can get it in might be a bit tight ah dropping down I 
I think I have to use the pulling technique. That's not going to be a long enough screw, is it? No, oh, it might actually pull it in. So I'm going to use this pulling technique to carefully pull it in. They do warn about not not putting too much strain on these on these sidewalls. I can understand why. Because it might crack so so I'm just going to try and use that to center it and pull it in. into the nylon port so I don't think I need to be too worried about that and on the picture it seems to all right. no it should disappear nearly in there I think I need to work on that hole a bit because that is not the nuts not going in properly okay so I got it finally in there but I must say it wasn't that easy so the tolerance is on the print were causing some some issue. Anyway, so now we need to put this one in. The rolling part. I don't think it matters which way around it goes. I mean it's not a this is not a symmetrical part, but it doesn't matter. It's just the casing for the bearing. So then it, it doesn't really matter which way around it goes. Not in this machine, at least. So let's try and <laughs> get it lined up. So, let's see. I think. And just screw it up. Now then you need to make sure that when you screw the, the screw in that you don't tighten it so that this doesn't turn this one doesn't turn so only tight enough so that you can see that it come the thread comes into the nylon part here and then it should be okay and then make sure that it still turns so done next phase That's actually they do warn about. I did read they warned about putting excessive force when trying to put the um, nut in. So I was good advice. Okay, so now we need to put the linear bearings on rods. So that's these ones, and then there's going to be. So there's going to be one rod with one linear bearing and then uh, two with all the other rod with two. 
And it's just to insert them on the on the rod. No one needs to be careful that one actually puts it in straight. So the one doesn't bend it at all. And very slowly and easily and a little bit of a sideways movement helps. So take your time when you're doing this. If you press them too fast and with the rod in an angle then you're gonna push out roll bearings and that's not fun. So as gently as possible. So remaining. Yeah, now we're out of the bearings, and I can actually put the tools back where they belong. It makes it easier to pick them up. And that will probably be needed. And then there's the other rod. Try to be as careful as possible. Yeah, I learned this the hard way because I've actually, you know, building my other printer, I. <laughs> A little bit too aggressive pushing the rods through and I end up with a pile of ball bearings. But then I had a whole box of them, a box of these linear bearings, so I just took a new one. But I do think these are maybe better quality also. The um the ones that I used I mean these come all from China, but um the ones that I came they were the the ball bearings they just kinda like dropped out. Okay, so that's that. And then we need to line up um, to put the end parts on. And let's line them up so we don't put you know, two on the end. It's well, yeah, in the wrong order. So. so maybe we should switch to the other camera view now. Switch only to that one. It's probably more makes more sense. So that should be on the top, that should be on the bottom, and then this needs to be like that, and that needs to be like that. And, um, oh, actually do need the mini cam. Um, no, not that one. Oh, sorry. So, uh, they need to be pushed in, and the great, they put a Nice assistance. Oh, that's not. Yeah, there. So there's a hole that you can look into to see how, that you actually got the um, you got the rod far enough. So the rod goes in that hole, and then you should be able to see it um, through that, which is actually very useful because um, I had also that problem when I was building my other printer that I didn't know if I had the rods big enough and I found out that when I went to install it on the on the actual um, uh, Z-axis that um, that I hadn't pushed them in so the you know the parts were too, too wide apart so then I had to actually go back and disassemble it and, and force the rods in so that's actually a good thing to have so we don't know how easily these will go in um, one needs to be a bit careful, this is a plastic part, so I think I'm going to actually do it on the table, so... Yeah, that's going to require maybe a bit of table assistance, so... So I'm just going to push these rods in until they're... Uh, wrong camera, put that. So I'm going to push these rods in until they become visible there. And then I'm just going to repeat the procedure on that side, and then eventually we put that one on. And actually, it would make sense to put this one on first, I think, because that could start like that. So I think I'm going to do that. Okay, I'll be back after I struggle through that. So I just wanted to show the first one is. First one is in, and you can. Oh, how can I get the correct pitch? Hey, you can't have the hammer. It's not yours. That's my dog. Oh, there! I oh, nearly got it. See, you can see why am I always moving? 
So the rod is there now. You can see that it's up against the back there. So that's how it's supposed to be. And um, yeah, you saw the hammer. So not not official advice from Prusa, just the way I did it. So this is a nice flat end. So I started with this part, put this on a on the t on a hard table, held it upright, and then just knock it very careful, not using the full force of the hammer, just little taps, keeping this straight and holding it down at the bottom. So like this against the table and then knock it very carefully at the top and then it will go in nicely. So I'll just fiddle the rest and then come back. Okay, so now it's um, assembled. So that's that. So that's in there, and then the same here. Oh. Oh, there's there, you can see the rod in there. And oh, the rod's in there. And here. So, in there. So, that's done. And um, I don't know if Prusa would advise using the hammer method I used, but um, if one really, if one has a very um, hard tabletop, and one starts from the flat end, and one takes it easy, then I think the one will be okay. Or actually, I mean, it turned out okay. <laughs> this is actually the trickiest end to put on, but I think the order that I did it was actually pretty good. It's the same that I used with my other print. Okay, let's see now. Now we're going to put the x-axis motor spindle on. Hopefully, I call it pulley. And then they wanted to man, especially mention in the instructions that one. Oh, come on, focus. Yeah, there you go. So then you have like a flat, a flat side. So I'm sure. Make sure that one has one of the screws for the pulley. Ah, switch to the small camera. I think. So, so it has two screws. So we need to make sure one of these screws lines up with the flat. This shouldn't be tightened down totally because you know, it's going to be adjusted later. So let's just make sure that the one of the screws is, is on for now. On the flat edge. Uh, I don't know if one can see it. But there's the. Show it like. It's not that easy to show. Yeah, you can see a reflection on the flat edge. So there I have the flat edge, and then you have the screw aligned to it. And then we just leave the other one as it is now. For now. So that covers this basically two <laughs> two page instructions just to show that right moving on. Okay now we need to screw the motor on. Um, oh three screws remaining. So if one has more more or less screws than uh, what the instruction calls for when it comes to the end, then one's done something wrong. Well, at least now it seems to really have succeeded in in, um, and we need to make sure we have the wires coming down the right way. And then that will that will have to come on there. 
and the three screws. So I will just fiddle those on, screw the motor on. And the most important thing is that the wire comes out the wrong way, the right way. I mean. So that's done. So that's the last, the last step. And um, if we put it the same way the, the picture is, then it should look something like that. And that's pretty much the same way that it looks like in the picture. So I also think we've done okay. So anyway. Anyway, if you um, thought this video was interesting, then uh, consider um, subscribing. If you liked it, would like share it. You know, if there's somebody out there struggling with this kind of stuff, then um, you know, share it out so that um, other people have an easier time putting this together. And um, there will be more. So, see you in the next one.